guys, today I'm going to share with you six tips on how to save money when buying a home off of the MLS. Let's get into it. Hey guys, DM here and welcome back to Lifestyle Leap where we help you take big steps towards early financial freedom. Today we are talking about saving money when buying homes off the MLS. A lot of times buying homes off the MLS, you kind of get a stigma in the real estate investing community that that is the least effective way to save money or uh, get a deal. But I'm going to give you six tips and stay to the very end because that's going to be the best pro tip number six. So number one is negotiate with your real estate agent. Sometimes you think as the buyer, you don't really have a lot of room to negotiate with your real estate agent for any type of discount or refund, but you can. And maybe, you know, if that offends them, okay, sorry, but maybe they see the value in you being a long-term repeat customer like my agent does, right? So after I purchased my first home and after I had her represent me in a sale, I saw, I asked her, hey, what do you think that we can do here? Is there something for the repeat business? She offered me a half a percent refund on my next purchase. And she also offered me a big discount, which I won't disclose, on the sale of my next home too. I have to say that I wouldn't have known that had I not asked. And she wouldn't have allowed that if she didn't see the value in me as a customer, because I do buy homes pretty quickly when we shop for homes. I also make her selling process really convenient. Like I'll go there for inspections. What do I do to get a deal? I'll do it, okay? Tip number two is asking the seller for closing costs. This is even possible in a competitive market. I bought two homes last year of the three that the seller gave me closing credit. That means that you don't have to pay for closing costs. And one was probably like 13,000. The other one was 11,000, I think. So these are significant amount of money that you don't have to put out in cash up front. Third tip is to ask for the furniture, especially if you're gonna furnish the house anyway. So let's say you strike an amazing deal and they give you some furniture for free as a part of closing the sale. Awesome. Even if they don't give it to you for free and you get a discount, that's amazing. But let's say, worst case scenario, you're not really getting a huge discount. You're just paying for some used furniture that's at a fair price. You still don't have to shop for it and move it in and get it through the door. That's a huge savings right there of both money and time. So consider that. Tip number four, consider buying a home that has fallen out of escrow, meaning another buyer, maybe they didn't perform, they couldn't get their loan, but they already went through the process. That might mean that inspections are already on file, like roof inspection, home inspection, pest inspection, or whatever else they had to pay for out of pocket that you now no longer have to pay. That could save you hundreds or thousands Another idea too regarding inspections is that once inspections are done, of course, you're going to use that to negotiate with the seller to see if you can get the price point down considering all the things that you have to fix and repair. But one, you don't have to repair everything. Two, you don't have to repair everything with the person who gave you the bid, right? So you should in turn then go hire somebody for a lower rate to do the same quality of work so that you can benefit from the price difference. We are on number six, the best pro tip I have for you. Let's say your um, closing date is like 30 day close. That's pretty standard but it's gonna put you to close on like the 29th or the 3rd, it's 30th of that month. Negotiate a few more days of closing, right? So that you can get as close to past the first of that month because you don't have to make your first mortgage payment on the upcoming first of the month. You skip that one and you go to the following first of the month to make your mortgage payment. So let's say you close on a second of the month. That means you have the whole rest of that month and the whole rest of the following month to live mortgage free. Okay. And if you're going to be spending that time furnishing it or renting it out, that's even more amazing because you get to put it on the market. So not only are you saving money from not paying that mortgage immediately, you are double dipping and making additional money on top of that while not paying the mortgage. I mean, if you liked it, will you please Press the like button for this video or consider subscribing to my channel. I'd love you to stick around and I will see you later.